Welcome back to We have a again from in-depth tech reviews and here's Google Apps updates roundup number 35. In this episode, I'm going to share with you 16 new features and the changes. Before starting, let me remind you to subscribe to the channel because I'm very close to the 100k subscribers and that will be a huge achievement for me. So your support will be really appreciated. And now let's take a look at the new features. I will start with Google Photos and the only thing I'm going to show you today is the ability to change the date and time for your photos and videos. And all you need to do is to open the photo you want and then swipe up to expand the info pane and then you will see a small edit button next to the date and time. Tapping on it will show you a small card at the bottom of the screen. The first item will allow you to change the date and in this case it will give you a calendar view to pick the day you want and the second one for the time which will reveal your time picker. Keep in mind that this feature only works with the photos and videos saved to the cloud. So here is one of the photos only saved on the device and I don't have the same edit button. This feature is similar to what we have seen in iOS 15, but in iOS 15 you can revert back to the original date and time if you want, which is missing from Google Photos. So I hope it will be added in the future just in case you made a mistake it will be much easier for you to revert back to the original date and time. This feature is also available on the web, just to open the photo or video you want and click the info button. You will see a small edit icon next to the date and time. Clicking on it will show you an overlay card to apply the edits you want. Another downside in this feature is the lack of multi-selection support. So if you have multiple photos selected, you won't find the option anywhere, which is another advantage in iOS 15. And that will be a huge time saver if you want to do the same for multiple photos. In contrast, it supports multi-selection on the web by choosing the photos and videos you want. Then click the ellipses button at the top right corner. Then you choose edit date and time. And here it will give you two options. The first one is called shift dates and times and that will keep the relative time difference between the photos. So for example, if you have one photo taken at 3 p.m. and the other one is taken at 5 p.m. and you choose the time to be at 6 p.m. In this case, the second photo will be at 8 p.m which means they will keep the same two hours difference between the two. Or you can choose the second option, which will set one date and time for all photos. So let's wait and see if Google will include those two options in the app. Next, YouTube Music. And the first change is the addition of a new widget for Android 12 users. It looks very similar to the one we saw in Google's I.O. event. It has a circular design with two buttons. Tapping in the middle will simply open the app. And when you start playing, you will see the album art. And from here you can play and pause or like the song. But I found it to be a little bit annoying because if I want to skip to the next track, I still need to access my media controls, even though I have a widget on my home screen that should make my life easier. When it comes to the size, this is the smallest one you can get, but you can make it as big as the entire screen like this. And finally, YouTube music users in Canada will be able to play music in the background even if they don't have a subscription starting November 3rd. However, the app will surface audio only ads similar to what we have in Spotify and I'm not sure if Google will roll out the same feature to other countries or not. Next, Google Chrome. And it got a new feature called Web Feed. This feature will allow you to follow the websites you are interested in and it requires a specific flag to be activated, which is something I'm going to talk about later. But for now, let me show you how it works. As an example, here is my channel's website. And let's say I'm interested in the articles published here. All I need to do is to tap the ellipsis button and then tap on follow. By this, when I open a new tab in Google Chrome, I will see a new section here called following. This section will only show me articles from the websites I'm interested in and it appears next to the normal discover feed. And later, if you want to unfollow any of the websites, simply tap the gear icon, then go to manage, then following. Here you will see the list, untick whatever you want and when you go back, everything will disappear. The other way is to open the same website and if it's already followed, tap on the following button and it will do the same for you. To activate the feature, head over to Chrome Flags and look for Web Feed. Once enabled, relaunch your Google Chrome and you are good to go. Next, YouTube. And the first change if you are playing a live video in full screen, with a half a swipe from the top, the comments will appear on the side, which is something I didn't see before. Also keep in mind that this gesture doesn't work in normal videos, so when I do the same, nothing happens. Also, I started to see some cards on my home feed recommending YouTube featured content like celebrate Hispanic Heritage Month, Mental Health Day, and I Promise. Next, Google Assistant. And finally, it got material use support. I created a dedicated video talking about the new design and the new features that came with it. 
If you didn't check the video, click the link shown now on the screen or in the description below. But for those who prefer to see the new changes in this episode, I'm gonna go through them really quick. First, Google Assistant is no longer using a translucent design. However, it shows as a floating card at the bottom of the screen with a solid background color. The snapshot button has been removed from the left corner and the keyboard icon got redesigned as well. Also, Google Assistant logo is now in black instead of using Google colors like before. And when you say a command, you will see a much bigger font with a faster and more prominent loading animation. The information card and the suggestions are no longer using borders, the background color matches the device theme, and finally the suggestions are in rounded rectangles instead of using a pill-shaped design. In some commands like what's new on Netflix for example, you will see a much better interface with bigger thumbnails. And when you trigger Google Assistant while in Google Chrome and have an article open, it will give you two new shortcuts. The first one is called read which will trigger the read aloud feature and the second one is called lens which will take a screenshot from the current web page and start searching for relevant information. In addition to the features I mentioned here and in my previous video there is one more feature that I didn't mention before which is the ability to ask for the UV index. So let me show you how it works. Show me the UV index. First it will tell you if it's high, medium or low, the current UV index level and the forecasted numbers throughout the day. You can also expand the UV index scale to know more about each one. Next, Gmail on the web got Google contacts integration and the shortcut is located on the right side. Clicking on it will show you all the contacts you have saved with the ability to search and open in a separate window. And if you have a thread open, it will only show you the contacts in this thread by default with the filter at the top to switch to all contacts if you want. Clicking the contact will give you a detailed view and from here you can add to contacts, send an email, schedule a calendar event, send a message, start a video call in Google Meet and finally see the recent interactions. Additionally, when you hover your mouse over the contact, you will get the same exact shortcuts. And finally, Pixel users got three new wallpapers under the curated culture category that you can see in the top row. So that's pretty much it for today. Those are all the new changes I wanted to share with you today. So I hope you like my video and if you do, please hit the thumbs up and subscribe for more videos. Thank you for watching.